Ciao Vittorio! Ciao Vittorio! Vittorio! Hi guys! Uh, oh, you are at the exhibition! Yes, uh, here I am. Uh, <laughs> um, oh, it's just a teacher or no? Uh, no, well, uh, I'm literally sheltering like uh, uh, because of the... There's a big storm going on right now uh, up here too. I'm sure it's the same in the city. Uh, so, um, well, it's great to see you all and be surrounded by uh, your work. You know, as you know, Magazzino is closed today. Uh, but uh, I believe also that we are uh, live. So I do want to welcome uh, everyone. Uh, this is uh, the first uh, uh, of the two-part series of Artist Conversations that we organized on Homemade. And I'm, uh, as you see, I'm joining you from Magazzino Italian Art, uh, where we currently have on view the exhibition uh, Homemade. So you do see some of you are behind me and uh, next to me. So I do have uh, Luisa, uh, wait, Bea, and I, I do have Andrea. And I do have here, even though it is closed now, I do have actually the ceramics of Francesco Simeti. As you know, Magazzino is closed Tuesday and Wednesday. So I uh, invite you all to come and see the show, whoever is here in New York. Uh, but I will also believe we do just share a beautiful movie on uh, uh, the exhibition where you'll hear even more uh, than the things that we uh, are gonna discuss uh, today. And just to briefly um, pretty much introduce uh, uh, the project to everyone, uh, Homemade is uh, uh, an exhibition uh, that is on view right now in Magazzino. Um, that includes uh, works by Andrea Mastrovito, Beatrice Scaccia, Francesco Simeti and Luisa Arabia, who, are, who will be speaking with us today, but also Danilo Correale, Davide Balliano, Alessandro Teoldi and Maria Rapicavoli, who you'll hear pretty much tomorrow uh, at the same time uh, on the same uh, website. But well, just a few things I want to introduce a little bit the project, then I leave you with uh, Chiara Mannarino, who's been the assistant curator of the entire project from its inceptions, and she will uh, uh, moderate uh, the conversation with uh, the four uh, artists that uh, are with us today. But Homemade uh, began as a way to convene the Magazzino community, uh, to convene the Magazzino community online during a moment of global quarantine. And uh, it's a project that really started as a digital, through our digital platform Magazzino da Casa and lasted more than eight weeks uh, and pretty much we've been uh, discussing and talking uh, with uh, all of you for uh, eight weeks uh, uh, weekly, uh, having our uh, Zoom uh, aperitivi and we were trying to pretty much in investigate the creative process, especially in the moments where a new direction had to be pushed and um, pretty much like we were all dealing at you, first of all, dealing with the limits uh, of uh, isolation and uh, 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 not having access to your studio. Uh, we could have not been thrilled uh, uh, by opening the exhibition uh, and translating all your hard work uh, during the time of homemade, uh, during the time of uh, the pandemic into an exhibition uh, and uh, mer merging the digital and the real. That's also, also been a, a big topic of discussion internally for us, like what's actually art uh, without experiencing uh, it uh, in a in reality, but I gonna uh, I just want to thank you all uh, again, all the artists, uh, uh, all your contributions uh, meant so much for all of us, uh, Magazzino, and uh, I know some of you will they're watching us today won't be able to see uh, uh, the show. We will um, um, keep uh, promoting it online, but. We, I, but for whoever is able to visit it, I do want to flag that the exhibition is up for another month. Uh, and uh, you're all welcome to come. Magazzino is open. Uh, uh, you uh, buy reservation and you'll be able to easily book a visit and uh, experience uh, uh, the work of those uh, artists. And uh, last thank you, but one of the most important one for me, I want to thank Chiara Mannarino for all your excellent work throughout the project and I'll uh, and it's over to you Chiara and uh, thank you everyone for tuning in for this. Grazie Vittorio, thank you for that wonderful introduction. 
Um, and hello and welcome to everyone joining us today. Thank you so much for being here uh, to speak about this very, very special project called Homemade. And Vittorio just gave a wonderful introduction, but again, um, this project was originally launched uh, as a dig digital initiative to support and engage artists working from home during the nationwide quarantine. Um, and the eight New York-based Italian artists who Vittorio introduced um, are all absolutely fantastic and really embraced uh, everyday materials and unfamiliar circumstances and many challenges to create fantastic works of art that really serve as a testament to the power and resilience of art, especially in this time. Um, and again, we're delighted to share that these works are on view and Vittorio is in the exhibition right now. So for those of you who are able to visit, we would love to see you there um, to see this beautiful show. So before going any further, I also have many thanks to give. And first to you, Vittorio. It has been such a joy and honor to collaborate so closely with you on this project. And I really admire you and your incredible leadership. So thank you. Um, thank you to the co-founders of Magazzino Italian Art, Nancy Olnick and Giorgio Spanu, uh, without whom none of this, from the virtual portion of the project to the actual exhibition that is now on view at the museum, would have been possible. Um, and I really cannot express how much I admire your vision and how grateful I am uh, to be a part of it. So thank you so much for giving me this unbelievable opportunity. Um, a huge thanks to the entire team of Magazzino. You are all so fantastic and professional and hardworking. And this was truly a group effort in every way. So thank you for your amazing support. And finally, to our eight participating artists, you have all given me so much hope and joy in this endlessly challenging time. And it has been a true gift to collaborate with each and every one of you on Homemade. And I'm so happy and excited to have your incredible artworks on view to the public at Magazzino until September 7th. So I, again, truly hope that everyone who's joining us today and beyond will come visit uh, very soon. So before we begin, I'll just give a brief overview of our program for today. Um, in just a moment, I'll give brief introductions to each of the four artists that we have joining us in conversation. Um, I'll give some background on their practice and walk you through their processes throughout the project along with some accompanying visuals. And then we'll start our conversation. So I have a few questions for the artists and towards the end of the webinar, I'll open for questions from the audience. Um, you should see the chat section underneath the video on Magazzino's website. And you can just type right into that box at any point throughout the webinar to ask a question. So without further ado, it is my absolute honor and pleasure to introduce the four artists that we have joining us in conversation today. So I will begin by sharing my screen with all of you. And here we go. Okay. So first we have Beatrice Scaccia, an artist and writer from Frosinone, Italy, whose visual works typically take the form of drawings and paintings. At the heart of Scaccia's practice is the need to create and investigate various characters that often remain genderless, faceless, and ageless through rigorous intellectual study and a deep understanding of materials and craft. Right before the beginning of Homemade, Scaccia had been working on the painting you see here, which is included in the exhibition because it initiated an ongoing inquiry that continued throughout the project's duration. Since she first started studying art history, she has been captivated by hairstyles and their symbolic meaning. And this infatuation led her to accumulate large amounts of doll hair for use in future artworks such as the one she created for Homemade. Although Scaccia usually works in two-dimensional mediums, she has long nurtured a desire to move into three dimensions, and this project presented her with the opportunity to do so. For Homemade, Scaccia used stop-motion animation for the first time in order to create a three-minute-long film entitled She Hoarded Her Intention, which considers her own collecting habits alongside the hoarding phenomenon that developed at the start of the pandemic. People across the globe have purchased and accumulated goods and products deemed necessary to survive the virus in mass quantities, leaving store shelves empty. Scotch's film explores this compulsion to hoard through a central protagonist, a handcrafted bust, which, as you can see here, changed significantly over the course of two months. Scotch incrementally covered the bust with the items she has accrued over the years, including her copious quantities of doll hair, and with every modification, considered how the things we choose to shield ourselves with can shape or conceal our identity. Each edition involved patience, learning, and trust, as Scotcha discovered how to best amalgamate and solidify this collection of objects on top of the figure, ultimately selecting beeswax 
to seal the weight-bearing aspects of her compositions. Scotcho's final film shares an intimate look into her process, as well as a series of lessons. Using a chalkboard backdrop to portray hand-drawn text and incorporating footage capturing evidence of hoarding in her own neighborhood, Scotcha calls attention to the tragedy of waste and notes that while objects may provide a semblance of comfort and protection during these uncertain times, nature will always reign supreme. Next, we have Andrea Mastrovito, a multimedia artist from Bergamo, Italy, whose work reconceptualizes painting and drawing and extends far beyond the studio to occupy and confront different audiences and communities through public performances and installations. For Homemade, Mastrovito drew upon his own personal experiences of upheaval to inspire his work. He and his family left their home in New York at the end of May in order to return to Bergamo, which had been tremendously affected by the coronavirus. In the two months leading up to their departure, Mastrovito decided to record the environment in which he and his family experienced the quarantine. Using an intimate portage technique, Mastrovito archived his domestic space through drawings of his immediate surroundings, created by covering household objects with paper and rubbing pencil directly over them. Mastrovito steadily built a family portrait of his wife, child, and self by uniting these drawings into three life-size paper collages, each of which is composed of an intricate web of distinct visual components. Mastrovito carefully selected the items he used to form these portraits in order to authentically represent his family members through the articles that best define them and their lives at home. He was also strategic in his depiction of their dispositions, seeking to accurately catalog their moods in this particular moment in time. While his son glances upward in a state of childish bewilderment, his wife and Mastrovito himself are characterized by their concerned yet powerful gazes. After composing these portraits, Mastrovito meticulously cut out each of the collaged pieces that comprised the three works and pasted them onto thick sheets of paper. His process of rebuilding them and making them stronger than they were before poetically reflects upon our collective need to reassemble our society and its structures in the wake of the coronavirus pandemic. Mastrovito accompanies these works with a series of three more abstract family portraits, which are also on view at Magazzino. The pieces you see here are smaller frittages created by manually superimposing a selection of books, each of which belongs to a different family member. Together, these portraits serve as lasting documents through which the artist and his family can remember their particular story of this time as told by their domestic space and the objects they lived with. Our third panelist is Luisa Rabbia, an artist from Turin, Italy, whose practice examines bodily landscapes that chart essential forms of human connection through drawing, painting, sculpture, and video. Her work is characterized by its large scale and its visual expressions of kinship and association. During this time of extended isolation, Rabia has approached Homemade as an opportunity to remind us of what truly brings and keeps us together. While many of us cling to technology to keep in touch with family, friends, and loved ones, Rabia looks to the past to inform the present and encourages us to remember what came before. At the beginning of Homemade, Rabia created a series of small works on canvas and paper some of which you can see here. These compositions of abstracted and intertwined human figures and forms reveal intimate experiences of physical touch. Rabia further engages this form of human connection by incorporating her own hand into the work, leaving its traces through her fingerprints, which mark the canvas before its paint has dried. Towards the end of the project, Rabia set out to create a large scale painting that suits the cosmic nature of the theme she explores. Her final work, Chorus, profoundly investigates human connection, looking beyond superficial means of being in touch with one another, and instead probing at the natural ways in which we are all interconnected. Rabia strategically strips away coats of paint from the surface of the canvas as she works, a process that mirrors our need to metaphorically remove the layers that obscure our deepest forms of relation in order to return to them. In Chorus, Rabia meditates on the belly button, a body part shared by all human beings and a continual reminder of our connection to past and future generations and of the time it takes to create them. In its depiction of overlapped figures that radiate luminous yellows from the areas in which they intersect, this work highlights how finding commonality with one another despite our separation can enlighten us. Furthermore, this painting visually manifests its title 
by creatively illustrating the concept that a chorus of distinct voices can only create harmonious song through unity. And finally, we have Francesco Simetti, an artist from Palermo, Italy, who is known for his site-specific installations, which aesthetically present enchanting scenes that ultimately reveal a darker subtext upon closer inspection. His work often appropriates photographs from newspapers and magazines to raise questions about the role of images in contemporary discourse, and also explores the tension between human beings and the natural world. These inquiries are embedded in his ceramic works, assuming the form of lush and abundant tangles of plant life. Though their exteriors look inviting at first, their hardened form inevitably belies their initially welcoming appearance, alerting us to the reality that their seemingly soft leaves are in fact sharp and spiky. By illuminating the strain between the natural and artificial, Simeti asks his audience to reconsider its relationship to non-human life, and in particular, its role in causing harm. For homemade, Simeti chose to investigate these themes through a previously unexplored medium. Over the course of two months, he created a series of animations that expose how nature emerged as humans retreated indoors during the lockdown. As intertwined webs of foliage appear from both horizontal and vertical perspectives, we are reminded of our everyday experience of watching nature gradually come into view during the quarantine. Confined inside, we were left to observe from a distance through our windows, which mark the boundary between our interior world and the outdoors. These animations not only explore the human longing for nature, but also how this moment demonstrates the effects of our absence from the outside world. His final video, now on view at Magazzino, is five minutes long and includes various scenes in which diverse plant life remains unbothered by human beings and expands through harmonious collaboration and mingling. His animations blend hand-drawn and watercolored foliage with scanned photographs from nature books or photographs taken by the artist himself. This digital and manual blending reflects the artist's ongoing grappling and internal conflict with the contradiction between our desire to remain connected to the outside world while we were confined to our homes and our complete reliance on technology to do so. His inclusion of music composed by his dear friend and collaborator Chris Cerone adds an element of magical mystique that mirrors our wonder for nature while simultaneously introducing an eerie and alarming call to action. So, Please join me in welcoming Bea, Andrea, Francesco, and Luisa. Ciao ragazzi, thank you so much for being here today. Oh. It's good to see Ciao you. Ciao Chiara, grazie. <laughs> um, so to begin, I think there are many, many different aspects to this project. Um, but to start, I'm wondering if each of you could speak a bit about the challenges that accompanied Homemade, because this has obviously been such a difficult and truly unprecedented, I think that's the perfect word for this time, um, moment. And one that's really required our collective adaptation in so many ways. Um, and from an artistic perspective, I think it involved an adjustment to working in a new environment with new restrictions, um, potentially unfamiliar mediums, and of course, in this very precarious moment. Uh, and I think there was a lot of commonality within the group, but also so much variation. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on the obstacles that you encountered and also on what you've learned from this experience. Uh, so, hi, Chiara. Um, wow. the, the challenges, I cannot separate the challenges from the learning experience. I think they are connected. So, uh, but I feel like I got challenged in so many ways. First of all, I decided to do it myself because my physical space didn't change. I work from home. But because of the peculiar moment we were all living, I decided to embrace something completely new. Also because I knew there was a community to support me in that. Uh, so building the bus was my first challenge because I never worked with 3D and the idea of, uh, there were technical challenges, understand how to use the glue, the epoxy, everything that I needed to build the bus. Then I decided also, I, I worked with video before, but I never worked with stop motion animation. And when you work with stop motion animation, you need a physical space, a setting. Uh, so you have to set the lighting, you have to, to pick a stage, and uh, then you cannot move anything anymore. You have to really be careful around it because if you mess up a little bit of light, if you're sloppy, you have to start all over. So it's really, uh, my studio atmosphere completely changed because I had the setting built. 
Mm -hmm. um, and also the kind of animation I did for homemade uh, was new to me because I usually work with uh, fragmented movement that I look and I add uh, in an installation environment, so in a installative way. Uh, this one was the first animation that was uh, narrative in a way. He had a beginning and he had an end and there were nothing uh, that was uh, looped or rep repetitive about it. So it was a way of documenting uh, uh, a feeling and uh, a specific period of, uh, of our life. So the challenges were many, but it was really rewarding too. Uh, ciao ragazzi. Uh, well, about me, I should say that um, the biggest challenge wasn't uh, about the work because I'm always used in working everywhere, every, mo every moment with any kind of thing, even if I, I can work at home, I can work in my studio, I can work in a stadium, I can work in a theater, and I can use uh, every kind, I, I want to, I always want to use every kind of material, and I let the materials inspire me uh, through their story, to the things uh, the way they are used but uh, I mean the biggest challenge for me was really to survive in that moment not only in a physical way uh, of course like everybody uh, because no, nobody knew what, what was going on uh, but really uh, I felt uh, that I need to challenge the pressure that was coming from my hometown in Bergamo because you know, as you told I mean I mean maybe people knows that Bergamo was the most uh, hard hit uh, town uh, in Italy and in Europe maybe and so every day we had very bad news from our town, our families, our friends. Uh, I spend uh, all days calling people and in order to mourn people, uh, to say I'm sorry for your loss. And uh, every day it was, uh, I mean, I, I went to bed crying every night. So the, the biggest challenge was to not uh, be destroyed by this, uh, this pressure. So, I mean, I, I was really feeling that I was losing my roots, my family here in Bergamo. And uh, so I, tr I, clung, uh, I clung to my, to my family in New York, my son, my wife, Mattia and Francesca. Uh, so I tried to create this kind of family portrait, which uh, is a triptych and uh, it's made out of frottage, as you say. The first idea came out from uh, the fact that we were leaving that house because uh, the situation in my hometown was too, too, too bad. We wanted to go back and help our families. And so we say, okay, as soon as it's, as it's possible, it's safe to travel, we go back to, to Bergamo. And so we want, I wanted to make a kind of diary, a kind of to create a physical memory of, uh, of our life in that beautiful apartment in Brooklyn. And so I tried, I decided to create this, uh, this triptych uh, with the first idea came, came to me from uh, Max Ernst's uh, Histoire Naturelle, uh, one of these, which is made, it's a kind of, it's a series of frottage and the, the most famous frottage is at uh, Metropolitan, I, I guess, yes, it's a Metropolitan. And once I saw it, I started to think about frottage and I really felt that uh, frottage was the right technique to record what was going on in the and uh, so, I mean, uh, these are our kind of avatar. Uh, they take uh, life during the, the, the quarantine and they are, they're still alive now at Magazzino. Yes, very much alive. <laughs> and I'm That's happy about day. this. Me too. Um, who is next? Is it me? Yeah, you can go. <laughs> eh? Is it me? Yeah, yeah, it's perfect. Okay. So um, my situation um, was a little bit different also because uh, um, I used in the past to uh, work in the same living environment. So uh, when I decided at the beginning of the project to work at home, I was actually familiar with the place. It was my old studio. And, and so in that sense, it wasn't challenging. And also it wasn't challenging the fact that um, I had to be, um, I mean, that I was limited with materials because uh, um, I was there when the, the, the pandemic, uh, the, the lockdown uh, was announced. I was uh, very focused on, um, on, um, on the solo show that I'm preparing for Peter Bloom in uh, November. So I had already a lot of material, materials in my studio and at home as well because I work a little bit everywhere. And, um, and uh, so I just basically was happy, to be honest, to have uh, time uh, 
for myself and uh, without you know being disturbed by emails or phone calls i thought this is the ideal time to you know focus on uh, on the work um but uh, I had my challenges uh, in any case, uh, and actually the challenges came with the project because uh, I found uh, very um, challenging, in fact, to um, present every week some uh, update um, uh, to all of you in Zoom. Um, not for anything. I mean, the, the group was great and very friendly, and uh, the situation was more than welcoming. But uh, what I found uh, difficult was uh, to protect the that mental space in which I find myself when I when I'm when I when I'm working. I didn't want to rationalize what I was doing. That's not exactly the way I work. I, I I work in a way in which I prefer at the end to be surprised by 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 the work. So the fact that I had to share the process was uh, for me actually very uh, challenging. Uh, for me, the process is private, to make it simple. But uh, what I learned, what I learned from the experience is, uh, is um, that I probably was able <laughs> to protect it and, and, and share it with you anyway, because at the end, at the very end, when I, when I presented the chorus to you all, and I thought that the chorus was uh, speaking about a larger society than the group itself, I actually noticed that that, that society was reflected within Chorus as well with the group, the community that we shared uh, in Homemade. So uh, probably I, I, I learned that. Um, yeah. Grazie, Luisa. <laughs> and Francesco, what about you? Um, I guess my experience in a way is um, similar to bits and pieces of each other um, experience as well. Um, I didn't think that the challenge was really this project or being invited to this project, actually possibly the opposite. Um, the challenge was um, the situation that we were living and, you know, not necessarily an art situation, but, you know, life um, and, and coming to grips to, with what um, was happening and, and also, you know, being uh, like everybody else here, um, very uh, rooted in Italy and, and sort of living this uh, double experience of being here, watching what was going there, and and and, and that's still going on actually. Um, um, and and also also a lot of my work is uh, based on commission, um, so a lot of that was sort of drying up as as we were going into the lockdown, um, to the point that. Um, the invitation to this project actually became as a lifeline almost and, a, and as a grounding, uh, so not a challenge at all. Um, and and also, like Luisa, um, I, I mean, I was able to go to the studio and work at the studio um, all throughout the pandemic, um, but so I, I guess I created my own limitation and my own and my own. I, I, I mean, I, I was very inspired by the, the idea that you, you that we were trying to do something that was out of um, our normal place. And so so I forced myself to to be at home working on this particular project and also um, um, I chose to use a technique that I'm not uh, usually you know, familiar with it and don't usually work on it. specifically the not so much the animation in general uh, I had worked with animation although I have been using uh, the help of uh, professional editors uh, this time around I um, decided to go about it by going through endless YouTube tutorials and sort of teach myself but most importantly, the part that I, that it was really um, totally new for me was um, the watercolor part of the of the animation, doing these stop animation watercolors. I'm not I'm not I do ceramics, I do sculpture, 
I do a lot of different things, but I don't really paint. I don't really do watercolors as much. Um, so, so that was definitely um, the big, the big challenge. But, but again, it was, it was a, it was a somewhat of a choice. It was, it was, a, it was, it was something that I was um, forcing on myself. Francesca, yeah, I'd love to pick up on some of the things you said because I really admire all of you for your bravery and courage throughout this entire process because I do feel like all of you really embrace the unknown, whereas it could have been something that was very scary and I think at times probably was because with the unknown comes some fear. Um, but I do think that all of you really embraced it in a way that is just so admirable and beautiful. Um, and I loved also that you said lifeline um, because for me, I think something that is so precious about homemade speaking about challenges is how, in a way, we've been able to kind of overcome them together. And Louisa, you were talking mm -hmm. about the Zooms, um, but I think that care has really been so central to the entire process from the very beginning. Um, and for me, that was something that was very, very special. So maybe um, all of you can speak a bit about the formation of the homemade community because it was uh, gradual, but also happened very quickly at the same time. Um, and maybe about how it helped you navigate what could have been such a difficult and isolating task of creating work alone in your home during the quarantine. Um, and also maybe in reckoning with the reality of our current moment. Um. So I, I think, um, uh, Besides the fact that it was really pleasant getting to know all of you, uh, and it was, uh, you know, it was interesting to see how different we all are, how terrified we were at the beginning with the Zoom aperitivo and how we, we kind of relaxed later on. Um, I think uh, uh, for the project, it, for me, it was uh, really useful because I was doing something com completely new. And it's not that I didn't try in the past. I did try uh, because I, I had this idea of working with stop motion and with 3D. But when you try to do something completely new in a moment that is so vulnerable for everybody, you tend to give up and you tend to get frustrated easily and just move on and do something else. That's at least how I do. Uh, so the, the idea that I had to pick a theme and I had to stick to that and I had to update the community about you know, my progress, my challenges, my difficulties, and I had to write about it actually kept me on track and didn't make me give up and, uh, you know, go somewhere else, somewhere, somewhere more comfortable for the, for the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think the writing part was really interesting because it started more rational and logical to me. I was trying really to describe what I was making. And then uh, the more we got to know each other, the more I relaxed. So even that part became more like, creative writing and uh, got connected organically with the work. Mm -hmm. So that was really interesting to see. Um, and with the current moment, uh, to me it's really difficult because uh, since the protest started and since I kind of got back outside, even if little by little, um, the lockdown feels so far away. I know the, the, the challenge is still here, the virus is still here, nothing has officially changed, uh, but I feel that it was a bubble and uh, it's, uh, it seems like almost a nostalgic moment that uh, it's not there anymore because I'm facing other uh, realities right now, not a different reality. Uh, so it's, uh, yeah, it's, it feels like that. It feels really far away somehow. Yeah. Andrea, maybe uh, for you it feels far away too because you're now in a totally different country too. <laughs> uh, no, here it's not far away at all. Uh, we are still in a big, I mean, uh, the, the crisis has gone away. It's no I'm not in total emergency like before here in Bergamo, but uh, I mean, uh, everybody, if you walk in the street, you see there are many, many problems everywhere. Every, everybody's got problems. So, I mean, we'll try to get back to life uh, in a different way than New York, because uh, here in Italy, you know, the lockdown was very strict. Uh, it's completely different than uh, in Brooklyn and New York. Uh, but uh, about uh, our community, I have to say that uh, I was really surprised it was a big surprise because I knew all of you. And uh, it's, I mean, Chiara, I, I knew, I met you for the first time on this occasion. But uh, I mean, about all of the artists, I, I already knew all of them. They were good friends since many years. Uh, but uh, I got a few moments in my mind. I mean, got many moments, but a few, a few memories which are very, uh, which are very good memories. Uh, I was uh, very surprised at, at the first uh, Zoom call, uh, our, our first aperitivo 
when Magazzino sent us a bottle of spritz and uh, moreover, a, a big bottle of hand, hand sanitizer. I mean, hand sanitizer in that moment was, uh, I mean, like a pure gold, a solid gold. I say, wow. They, and we're still using it, huh? you know, even if we, we, we brought it back to Italy. And uh, that was uh, such an uh, important thing for important uh, thing for us to receive. Uh, as I mean, we're still using the hand sanitizer while the spritz, it finished in just a few minutes. Uh, right, I think together with you, and uh, I still remember the first meeting with my, with uh, the, the first aperitivo because uh, I guess that I was very worried, really worried. I told to everybody. I, I remember I warned everybody because uh, I was uh, listening to what was coming from my town, from my family, from my friends. I say, take care, take care, take care, because it's very, stay safe. It's very dangerous because it wasn't clear in New York, uh, and I I remember that I was uh, very sad. And uh, once we finished the, the, the first uh, Zoom call, I received an email from uh, Luisa, who wrote me, uh, I'd like to come uh, to your place and hug you. And I really felt that it was uh, such a beautiful uh, thing from her. I mean, and in, during the last, the, the, the following weeks, uh, I received so many messages uh, from Beatrice, Francesco, from Davide, from uh, Maria, from Vittorio, from Chiara, from everybody. It was like a big family. And uh, this was... Uh, uh, I mean, that's the best thing that can happen to a human being, you know, you know, you are in the big trouble and all of your friends are telling you, well, we can do whatever you want, it, you know, in order to help you. And I still remember the last thing is the, during the show, uh, at the opening when Maria Rappicavoli, one of the artists, uh, called me with a video call. Uh, and then I wasn't there. I was the only artist uh, who wasn't at the opening because uh, I was in Italy already. And uh, with, the, with the video call, uh, she uh, showed me that all of you were in front of our avatar in the gallery. And so it was like being there with you. Grazie, Andrea. So what a... Um... What I uh, remember clearly um, is the desire, you know, from all of you, uh, Vittorio, Nancy, Giorgio, but literally all of you, uh, I mean, organizers of, uh, of uh, Homemade, to make us feel that what we were doing uh, really matters. That, uh, that, I, that I thought that it was, uh, it was uh, relevant because you know in a in a in a in a in a difficult time that affects the world you know at the level of the pandemic uh, i guess even though all of us are aware that art is a social project and and, and it matters you know we all wonder also you know how, how important it is what we are doing and and i remember you know this uh, consistent um, uh, voice coming from you that said, uh, you know, art is a source of life, you know, keep, keep going, it's important. Um, I don't remember the question anymore. Of you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's okay, this is wonderful. No, uh, but, uh, I wanted, so let me see, I'm sorry. Yeah. Mm. Uh, so just about the community. Yeah, what, 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 uh, what was also more uh, very uh, relevant uh, for me, uh, interesting for me, was to see how our different personalities were uh, shaping our works. Mm -hmm. That uh, is something that de developed, you know, from the beginning to the end and, and, and came out very clearly um, uh, and is very clearly shown at the exhibition. I, I, I would say, and, uh, and I found it very interesting and, and inspiring. Um, there was something else that I wanted to say. I, yeah, I think it was in response to what uh, Beatrice said. For me, as for Beatrice, the um, uh, reaction to the pandemic was uh, very different from the reaction to the heavy racist uh, uh, expressions that we experience uh, later. Um, uh, while the pandemic somehow asked me to stay home in order to be active socially and therefore I could dig deeply into my own work, uh, when uh, the events of racism, which are not unusual, right, we just acknowledge them uh, uh, more, more light, uh, loud during this time, because, you know, it's unfortunately part of this uh, society and you know, you know, of the world. But when the protests, you know, raised, and, and, and I felt uh, as much as 
I guess all of you that, that it was impossible to work and it was time to go out in the street and, uh, and uh, put my voice out of there. That was very disruptive, I think. Whereas the pandemic for me, as I explained already, it wasn't. So I don't know if I'm answering to the question anymore, but <laughs> no, no, it's perfect. I'm going. <laughs> okay. Francesco, what about you? Uh, it, it's hard to, um, to go after all three of you. Um, but, um, and again, I can um, um, concordo. I can, I can, I, I'm agreeing with, with all of what you've saying, been saying. Um, the, I'm, like Andrea said, um, I, I guess I knew each other, everybody, but, but I realized, I mean, over the course of the Zoom meetings that um, I had a false sense of knowing um, the other artists because um, I got to know them during during the our meetings and not I guess I wasn't I didn't know them as well as I thought um, and and just like Beatrice was saying the whole uh, having to write and having to to um, to have this sort of fixed schedule was also very important. Um, and, and I too, um, um, I'm, I'm much more comfortable writing about my work now than I was before. Um, and I think this was, it's a, it's a direct result of, of this uh, sort of um, forced um, schedule that we had. Um, and, and I am very appreciative of it. Um, and during, during our conversations, I was, I was very often talking about how time was such an essential part of this whole process and how time had somewhat stopped during the, the lockdown. Um, and I think time has now accelerated very, uh, much, um, and we have moved into a totally different um, place um, and time. And, and I am struggling as well um, with the, the new scenario. Um, I, 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 I cherish uh, what we've done and I'm, and I'm hoping that we can evolve it into, into something that continues and, and, and has as much relevance as it had for the for this past few months, but the new uh, political scenario has made it also very hard for me to um, to make my own work, to even to you know make posts on Instagram about my own work. It just doesn't. It it just seems like this is a time that perhaps we need to be a little more humble and step back a little bit and I mean step back not in terms of being passive about what's happening actually we do need to be very very proactive and engaged but maybe a little more humble and passive about our own um, selves and mm -hmm. and you know it's just it's just that I, I, I think we owe it to the to the moment um. yeah i do think what Bea, what you were saying about this bubble it does feel in a way that homemade was kind of like this dream and it's really amazing that we were able to share so much time together and i think for me that was so special too from a curatorial perspective just getting to know all of you as well as i think we did considering the circumstances because sometimes technology can really be a barrier in some ways but i feel like mm -hmm. i've never been um, so grateful to have it um, and so getting to know all of you really and having to write about your work as much as all of us did was really great because I feel like the work started to speak so much more powerfully over the course of weeks and I think I, I mean I hope that comes across too in the exhibition just how you know different all of you are as people and as artists but also what a strong dialogue there is um, between all of your work I think it's really beautiful um, and I, again I hope that comes across in the show. Um, and I know we're running close to the, the, to the time that I should probably start the audience questions, but I'm just wondering maybe if 
you can briefly speak about, because we were talking about time and just how precious all of that has been. Um, and in sharing with one another, I feel like that's something that doesn't often happen in the way that it did. It's just so rare to be able to, to share that time together. So I'm wondering if that's something that you would want to continue um, in the future with other artists or with the same artists, and if that's something that was helpful. I know, Louisa, you didn't like the virtual aspect of it, but was maybe <laughs> about the sharing portion, um, if that was helpful also for Very your artwork. Good idea, yes. Uh, I think it, it depends on the, um, on the moment you mm -hmm. live in. Uh, I feel like community is always important, in particular when you're an artist. Um, but uh, there are moments in which you have to be quiet. So I think, uh, um, of course, I hope we will keep a community. Uh, but uh, I don't know if that's possible in a structured way like we did. Mm -hmm. But it would be more informal, probably. Uh, more like a, a, a friendship. And uh, because I feel like I need to share part of my process when I'm in uh, trouble. But usually when uh, I keep going with my own work, I like being quiet too. So um, yeah, so community is, is important, but it has to be flexible in a way, in particular because the life got back to a, you know, a different reality completely for now. Yes. Uh, well, I, I like to come back and see all of you uh, for real. Finally, when uh, maybe next year, uh, but I really feel that the, community, the idea of community has always been very important for me as an artist, and I really uh, I learned this in New York, uh, for example, uh, with other artists like uh, Luisa and Francesco. We met when we were a kind of small community uh, with Andrea Galvani many years ago, talking to each other, to each other with long email, long phone calls, meeting uh, in order to understand what to do with Sgarbi Biennials. <laughs> and uh, also, for example, with David, uh, we already uh, started a kind of uh, a new program with David and other artists in, a few years ago, uh, which was uh, called the Construzione di una Cosmologia. So I really felt that to stay together and uh, to share ideas is really important. And uh, this, our aperitivo were were exactly this thing. And I felt also that all of us were working in the same, in the same direction. We developed our works in the same direction. I realized that uh, many of us were working uh, with the idea of pasting together uh, the pieces of this uh, broken reality, you know? Uh, the idea of collage, of putting things together, the idea of create a kind of chorus. And uh, everybody wanted to connect uh, the remains, to bring new life to that things. And I really feel that this is the, what we do as artists. We bring uh, that things uh, to life. Grazie, Andrea. So, Chiara, we just, uh, you had just assisted in real time that one of my works fell on the back. <laughs> Same <laughs> happened. <laughs> when you saw David, you know, pulling it away anyway. Uh, I'm glad you asked this question because um, I, I want to make it clear that a community, uh, it's to share in a community is very important for me as well. What I found difficult, as I said, only specifically was uh, to do it through Zoom and the fact that required some timing also, no? So it's not that you seek for help in a, when, when you need it, you know, when you need the, the opinion of, uh, of your friends, uh, uh, your artist friends very often. But, you know, the, the, the timing, so um, uh, schedule in advance, um, it, it was difficult. But otherwise, absolutely, I, um, to be part of, uh, of a larger group of uh, artists and uh, share our own works is uh, definitely uh, very important for me and for my growth. Um, uh, to do this again, to do this again, I'm afraid it will require another pandemic. <laughs> I mean, we're still actually- yes, Maybe not in the same exact- you know, okay. It was dictated by, by that uh, specific moment. Absolutely. And uh, otherwise, hopefully, you know, we can uh, meet in person, experience the works in person, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, I think that's how it, it, it should be, you know? Um, and, um, and, uh, and, and also, yeah, you, you, you usually you control, uh, you know, the size of the group and, you know, to make yourself uh, comfortable also. That said, 
again, you know, it was uh, it was absolutely great uh, as it was. Uh, uh, kind of unique on its own. That that that's what I think, though. Definitely. I, I think that the opening itself was like the, the show, the, 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 the conclusion with the show and Andrea, you were truly missed at the opening, um, but the avatar was beautiful, but not enough. Um, it didn't, it didn't, you know, it didn't, it, it wasn't cracking jokes. Um, so it didn't <laughs> Definitely really work not for me, same, but, then. <laughs> uh, but, um, but, um, yeah, I think that that sort of, in a way, um, makes it clear that um, as much as Zoom has been um, uh, a way of surviving this time, we need so much the, the physical experience of both art and people. Um, I mean, you know, it's, it's, it was super, super special to, to be able to you know, to be part of this uh, adventure and, 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 and also the creation of a family. Um, but, but, but the opening itself, the event itself, the show itself is just, just another, another thing, another level. And, and, and it was, and it was beautiful. It was like, really exciting. It's just plain evidence I think, of the difference. I totally agree with all of you. Um, and thank you so much for sharing such beautiful things and for being so honest as you always are. Um, I think it has come to the, to the time that I should ask and see what questions have been submitted by the audience. So give me one moment. Um, we have a question for all of you. Um, some of you experimented with new techniques. Are you going to keep working with these mediums for new projects? Uh, I think I will. Uh, I, I have to master my 3D skills because uh, the buzz doesn't look as good as I, I thought it would. Mm. Uh, but the stop motion animation is definitely a technique that I love. And I grew to love thanks to this project because uh, having the physical space and having a character there in 3D, uh, it's kind of a companion in particular when you are in your studio all the time. So. Um, yeah, it, it's a completely different path and I, I love it. It allows me to work with the writing, uh, with, uh, uh, with the 3D, it allows me to think about the lighting and uh, it's, a, it's a beautiful, I'm really glad I tried. So I, I will, I will keep going. That's great. Uh, well, for me, I mean, as you can see, I got a big flash <laughs> here. It's enormous. <laughs> <laughs> And if you could see, I can't turn the computer around because uh, it's a uh, very fragile computer. But uh, you can see, one second. I got, now I'm a rich guy here. Uh, <laughs> you see, I got <laughs> this infotager made out of money, euros, while the ones in uh, New York were made out of uh, dollars and any kind of uh, object that I found in the house. But yes, uh, I, in the, during the years, I had already used the technique of frottage in a completely different way, completely different. Uh, and now, thanks to homemade, I really discovered, rediscovered the technique, and uh, not which is not all the technique. It's a way of uh, uh, a drawing, and drawing is always at the the, the fundament of what I do. So let's see. This is uh, now is the last thing that I did. Okay, let's see. It looks like it works, but uh, I hope I can do something better in the next month. Luisa, I think Lisa. you. We can't hear you. <laughs> no, because I put it on mute. Okay, sorry. Uh, so, um, in my case, um, I would say that uh, my work uh, changes and evolves also technically, um, quite organically from one work to the other one. So in fact, this um, uh, way to draw or paint by scratching off uh, the paint when it's still wet, which I applied over fingerprints in, um, in corals, um, it, it's something pretty new for me. Uh, it's something that I tested on a, on a small, smaller scale uh, just before the invitation to be part of Homemade came. Mm. 
and the and the chorus is the first work in which I really developed it in uh, in uh, such a larger uh, scale. So um, it's definitely a new direction for me, and uh, uh, and, and 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 I'm going there. You know. Uh, Definitely, um, I'm already working on something new at the moment, and uh, and I and, uh, and I'm, I'm still using this uh, removing uh, technique, uh, if we want to call it that way. <laughs> um, I I will too, uh, most most definitely. I'm, in fact, I am um, starting to work on an animation for for an upcoming show um but um also watercolor i mean i i like to try new techniques all the time it's just a way of like um feeling engaged and not getting bored with with what you do all the time um but again because i work so much uh, on a commission base not you're not always um, able to do what you want to try. Um, you have to stick with, you know, your next sort of project, your next deadline. Um, and, and so the watercolor part of it was something that I had been wanting to do for a really long time, but I've never managed to, to find the right time to try it. Um, and, and that was kind of a nice, aspect of, of homemade was in a way was this residency that was allowing me to time to do you know residencies are time that are given to an artist to experience something new and and, and so homemade was a residency after all in your own residence but it was a residency um, in your own but that's great yeah. <laughs> it really was in a way yes it was so I think we have time for one more question. And here's another one for all of you um, from Maurita. The pandemic forced everyone to stay at home. As expats, I guess one of the first challenges was to define or redefine what home means to you. And being from one of the worst hit countries and living in one of the worst hit cities must have made things even more difficult. I wonder whether the sense of separation or dissociation entered your work and if homemade helped you overcome that fracture. Thank you, Marita. Um, I think it's, uh, yeah, homemade helped a lot. Uh, when uh, Hidali at first was going through so much trouble and uh, we had some issues in my family too, I, uh, I was thinking where I should be uh, all the time. So I didn't know where home was, mm -hmm. uh, but then I decided to stay in New York and uh, homemade and I got the invitation for homemade and then made my staying here a little bit more grounded um, and I'm really glad I stayed I think uh, I even if I struggle with it every now and then I belong to the city still and uh, New York is home. Uh, well for me it was the opposite because I really felt that my home was uh, well, my, my hometown was my home so I really need it need to go back because uh, I mean uh, the situation was in New York was awful but in Bergamo was so much uh, terrible and terrific I needed to come back to go, to go back but I have to say that uh, to create this triptych uh, and to work for a homemade uh, gave me the only fixed point in those months I mean the whole world the whole art world but the whole world was sinking in the sea, in this ocean of uncertainty. Mm -hmm. And this was the only certain thing. I mean, I wanted to do this. I was also finishing my movie. And so uh, I focused just on my movie, my next movie, which will be shown at Magazzino. And, uh, and this the project. <laughs> yeah. Questa uh, pubblicità. <laughs> Uh, I just focus on that and it helped me to create a kind of a home inside of myself uh, and that's why I, I mean in my portrait I, I got my hands in my pocket and uh, as I wrote you it's like I'm looking for the, the keys for my home in my pocket in order to go to go back. Luisa, Luisa non ti sentiamo. Non ti sentiamo. 
sorry, I always go mute, so I, I, don't, I won't disturb anyone. Um, uh, yeah, it was actually uh, quite heartbreaking for me um, when uh, the pandemic hit Italy so badly and then it started over here. Uh, not because I question whether I should have been there or here, because you know I've been in New York at this point 20 years, and um, uh, this is definitely home for me. But uh, it's the first time in my life that I experienced that if uh, my family needed me, if something happened over there, I would have not been able to reach them. And it, this it still gives me chills. Um, I it, it was horrible uh, and I guess that that was uh, reflected in uh, the small works that you show you know when you presented my work uh, those are titled poles you know one pole of the earth the other pole and you know there are these two heads kind of uh, reaching out to each other mm. I think but I, again I realize it only later usually I am able to, I'm able to speak about the work only after I made it and I think that that was the, the idea, emotional idea behind that piece, this desire to be able to reach them despite the distance. It, it's, uh, Maurita, thank you for the question. It's super loaded. Um, and I don't know that I have any real answers to, to the, I, 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 haven't, I haven't been able to, to find a definitive answer to to those kind of questions, New York has been home for me for many many years as well. Um, but this is the first summer in my lifetime that I don't go spend um, at least a month in uh, my family's farm in Sicily, um, and that's been super incredibly hard. Um, so, I mean, I do have a home. I have two homes it, and, um, and, it, and it's been really hard. I, I, I do think that, that the work somehow, um, you know, the, the longing for nature um, reflects um, my attachment to my, to my family farm and to the Sicilian countryside. So I think the work is some, somewhat part of that. Um, in general, it raises the, the whole being being in two different. The, the, this is a very complicated issue, and uh, we don't have a whole lot of time. But but the pandemic uh, raises a lot of questions about the lifestyle that we um, have had for the past years, and increasingly so, and the excessive traveling and the excessive sort of the you know it, very serious issues of sustainability and. And, and I think that those have to inform the way that we um, consider homes. Like we, we, maybe we shouldn't be able to, to, to hop from one place to the other with such ease as we have uh, in the past. And, you know, again, I have two homes, one in Sicily and one in New York. And for me, first person, is, it's a really, really hard concept to, to get a grip on. Thank you all so much. Not, a, a little dark note, just to yeah. end it. I'm sorry about but that. Very I mean, honest, and thank you for sharing all of it. All of you, thank you so much. And I really, I wish this conversation could continue uh, much longer, but unfortunately, we are um, pretty much out of time. So I really want to thank everyone who joined us virtually today um, for this conversation, as well as, of course, Bea, Andrea, Luisa, and Francesco. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, and before thank I you, bring yeah. Vittorio back to officially close the webinar, I just want to say again that we will have a second round of homemade reflections with the remaining four artists tomorrow at the same time, 12 p.m., and the same place. So we do hope that you'll join us again, and of course, to see you in Cold Spring for the exhibition, which is on view until September 7th. Um, so I'm just, there we go, Vittorio's back. Ciao Vittorio. Here we are, yes. We are. <laughs> well, thank you so much. I've been like uh, uh, watching uh, everything and you know, it, it's, such a, uh, it's such a special moment, you know, and I do want to, first of all, thank you, but also say two things because you raised so many great, great points on, uh, uh, on the experience, the idea of building a community. 
you know, from our perspective at Magazzino, Magazzino turned three years old during the pandemic. And I do feel it's our mission to really build, uh, in a way, our own community that is actually has always been across uh, the two continents, uh, two, the two nations. And I think we were really able with this project to highlight a very important element about the nature of Italian art, especially in the contemporary uh, world that actually is not always in Italy. And, uh, I was, and I'm, we're very proud to be able to do a project like this with artists that like us, I mean, including me and, I, and our founders, they actually live in, uh, uh, in New York State. You know, we are like only an hour away from New York. And we were able to experience and share this moment, this question that Maurita raised. But that was pretty much the first question that we all asked ourselves. Uh, do I go back home? Uh, how do I get back? Uh, how do I get back home? Those are the moments, in a way, that really made us question uh, where we are. And another uh, another thing that I found very interesting in your conversation was the idea of uh, some suspension. You know, I think this moment it won't be able to be really replicated in the sense that we're already in a new world, and we experienced that right uh, during the uh, the project. You know, like we were able to. Uh, to do this webinar a few uh, weeks ago, and we decided to not to do uh, that because of uh, the, uh, because of what was happening uh, in the city. And I do see that we're really uh, facing already something completely new. And I do also feel that this is very rare for people living in New York. I feel we never stop. And I think this was the only time where we were able to really be vulnerable and really being able to share this all together. And uh, I don't want to hope for another pandemic, but I, I, do, I, I do feel that like, uh, this is a very special time. Uh, it's been extremely uh, uh, productive, you know, and I, you know, I'm, I'm saying that surrounded by all, uh, uh, by all, your, uh, all your works. And uh, another, uh, another thing uh, that I wanted to say, and then uh, we'll close the webinar, is that uh, uh, you guys really open a new phase for the museum, you know, we never did a contemporary art show in our galleries and uh, we never dedicated uh, um, an entire gallery to works of artists, uh, Italian artists living in New York. And uh, I'm very proud we were able to do it with you and to really question this idea, of course, of a legacy of the previous generations of Arte Povera uh, that we have in the gallery, but also to create a link uh, with the territory and actually like to New York and really highlight this dimension of uh, uh, an Italian artist, uh, not necessarily like, you know, uh, living in Italy. And I do want to also leave you with a message from our co-founders that are watching us uh, uh, from, uh, um, from our offices uh, here. And uh, this is from Nancy and Giorgio. Grazie a tutti. Giorgio and I are so grateful to all of you for struggling through this challenging time and creating such a personal and powerful work. We're so happy to exhibit all works at Magazzino and being able to spend time together at the opening was the icing on the cake. Hope you all be back to the museum soon. And you will, because I saw you this weekend already, uh, Bea. And uh, <laughs> <That's> <laughs> I'm sure we'll see each other uh, very soon. But I want to thank you again. And I will uh, see you uh, all soon. But also to everyone watching us tomorrow, we're having the second round, Chiara, right? Yeah. Um, with the other four artists. And um, uh, that's it. So have a good uh, day or evening, who's, whoever is in Italy. And thank you, guys. We'll, uh, we'll be in touch very soon. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Ciao. Bye. Buona giornata. Grazie.